What's up everybody, welcome back to another drawing tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a Demon Slayer character, Tengen Uzui, the sound Hashira. The new Hashira, well, depending on when you're watching this, obviously, from the Entertainment District arc. So, I have one of them already, sort of more standard one of him, sort of facing forward. I thought I'd do like this cool sort of one with his sword coming across his body, okay? A little bit of a complicated one. We're close up on the face ish. Sword coming across his chin or under his chin. And he's all these jewels and he's like the flashy Hashira. Right? So, got all these jewels and stuff. So, his face isn't bang in the middle. It's kind of slightly over to the left. So, the center point of my page, I would say, is about here, sort of. Right? And that's where the right eye will be. Right? So, his his left eye but the right eye as we look at it so right here and he's in three-quarter pose right so that means we'll we'll start with the normal looking eye like so when a character is in three-quarter pose his head is turned away from us so we have a, a big eye and a slightly smaller eye okay depending on how far his head is, is turned right but the main thing to remember is that both the eyes are not the same okay so you've got to do a smaller eye over here. But we'll start with the, the sort of normal looking one here, the kind of full size, right? So what we'll do is we'll curve a line across here. And his eyelashes are quite big, right? So we've got like a sort of spike up here and this comes back down. And you're gonna like thicken this up and color it dark, right? So, like, we're gonna color this all black. So adding some extra line weight to his eyelid line, to his eyelashes. Right, kind of like that. And then bottom eyelid, curves down this way and it gets thinner as it goes okay so the general shape is like this but it's thicker up here right so you'll add you'll darken it and thicken it up right and it gradually will get sort of thinner as we go down this way and eventually it's just like a normal single line under here okay so like So, and we can actually see his tear duct in this picture. So it's actually like drawn in like that. And then his iris half sort of circle under here. And there's no pupil. There's only sort of hatching sort of lines that come across. Like so, okay. So like no sort of pupil to speak of, just sort of darker in here. Like so. So, eyelid line above, right? So it just like goes up, across. So it's down that way, maybe like another line there. So that's kind of the normal eye. He's got a headband that comes across here, but we'll just, so we can't do the eyebrow yet because it goes underneath the headband. So we'll just come across and we'll give this smaller eye, right? So it it's pretty close, right? It's, it's, it starts about right here. So our head is tilted. So this eye is like, the gap isn't a full eye. It never is in Demon Slayer, but I'd say like it's from his tear duct to the start of his iris. That's the width you want to go again. Okay, here to here is about the same as there to there. Okay, so quite close together. And then, so his his um, eyelid line. So we'll go up this way, right? So we're not the same now. A little bit smaller, but we will thicken it up. 
Nice. He's got this spike again that sticks out here. Right? So different shape now to this. And it's also higher up. You know, it ends at a higher level because it's tilted away from us going that way. His face is turned away. And then the bottom eyelid curves around here. Comes back up around into here. And the tear duct is actually like drawn in there. And this end is a little bit thicker again. Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so iris in there. And again, no pupil to speak of, just these hatching. Sort of lines in there. And then his eyelid line goes up. Cross there and his eyebrow he's got like all these red dots and stuff but we're drawing the main features of the face and then we'll do that and the eyebrow here will go underneath his headband so we draw that first before we do anything else so because we're in three quarter pose his nose is drawn in so that means it comes down here so the center line from his face comes down this way so then this curves around down here and then we can just see a nostril like that and there's some hatching on the front of his nose on the bridge of his nose just there so his mouth is actually it's a little bit tricky his mouth, right? So, because there's all these bumps and sort of stuff on it, right? So, the center curve for his face curves like this way. There's a curve to a face, right? It's not like just straight down, right? So that means that as we curve around here, the mouth will be sort of pushed over to the left, the center of the mouth, right? So what I mean is like here. Right, it looks like a tiny mouth at the minute, but that's just the middle. Right, so then this curves across and up like that. So it kind of bumps, it's, this, it's just Demon Slayer style. And it has this on the end of the mouth, right in the corners. And then over here, we have something similar. So it goes, but it's smaller because this is the small side of the face now. So it goes only about to here. So this one goes right underneath his iris there. This one stops just under the, the tip of his nose. And we have the dot here. Because this side of the face is the small side. It's the main thing to remember. In three quarter pose, you can only see three quarters of his face. So the fourth quarter that's missing is missing from this side, right? So this is, smaller than this right this side can go across here about twice like when you hit the side of his face so in the shadow underneath his chin is there underneath his bottom lip sorry and then his chin about here and we're still sort of in normal proportion so it's like top eyelid to the nose is about the same as nose to the bottom of the chin so like the tip of his nose, here to here, about the same as here to here. And then nose to bottom lip sort of area is about the same as nose to, uh, sorry, do that again. Nose to bottom lip area is about the same as bottom lip area to chin. All right, so your bottom lip's about halfway between your nose and your chin. And your nose is about halfway between eye, top of his eye and his chin. Boom, boom, and then boom. 
that's the proportion right now so in three-quarter pose we can only see one jaw and then one cheek right so we're different asymmetrical curved line for the center of his face and then our jaw goes up this way on that side and then it kind of turns goes up towards the ear here can't see the jaw here what we can see is a cheek right so chin curves out for his cheek there and then comes in towards his eye and then back out for his forehead and then goes up like that right so this bump is for where his brow would be and this bump is his cheek so it's subtle sort of shape now tricky to get the hang of so pause it and try your best so his headband then comes across here so it comes all the way across his head so it like goes like so and then he's got these bandages and stuff right so under here there's some and this comes up like so and this side is more round so it goes around here across and down and there's a jewel that sticks off here so it's like a little bump right so you can just add that if you want and then a line makes it look a little bit more 3d just like that there's all jewels on top of that but we'll just finish his face first so those eyebrow lines that i said so they're like sketched in so we're like this and then here Like so. He also has some lines just underneath his eye. There. And then he has these red. They're, I will draw them in because we, you know, they're important to know where they are. But they're done with red colour, right? So if you have a red pencil, it would, or whatever way you're colouring it, do. But if you're not in manga style, you can just do it black, okay? So they come out from around his eye, right? So one goes underneath. The headband here they're like these little sort of balloons or something so like one there three on top two in the bottom and then um two small ones on top and three small ones on the bottom right so come up this way and then goes around like so and then this one there and then out here. Like so. And then two small ones. So like one here. That, that'll be that line going in towards his tear duct. And then one here. And then we can't see this one. And then two small ones here. Right, like so. Right, so then loads of jewels coming off the corner and jewels across here and his ears in behind the jewels. So say we'll draw the jewels first. Right, so we've got like all these sort of angled kind of lines. You can just like roughly sort of draw them in, it doesn't have to be perfect. The next one starts on top of the previous one. Some can be smaller, bigger. Right, so we're kind of going out this way now.
and we will eventually stop with a small one on the bottom so like we'll stop it here you could go further if you wanted but i think that's roughly where it stops and then in on that right there is like extra sort of lines like this and then they go textures into the corners like kind of like that right and it's all sort of angle lines so you want it to be kind of angles like this and then lines going out to the corners you just kind of do that everywhere that and there is something similar on this side but we'll do we'll sort of finish his head and then we'll add that sort of in a minute we've got to get his ear in here so this goes around behind these jewels right and goes into the bottom of his jaw and he does have these metal studs golden earrings right on his ear down here got another eye in there so these sort of golden earring sort of things here right and you can raise that line or color over you know, the bit for his ear, if you need to. And we got some more ear lines inside here. Like so. Right, so then his head, right? So he's got, it's. I think it's bandages or his hair is like, it looks like bandages, but it could be his hair, I'm not actually sure. So there's all jewels in his headband as well, but we'll just draw in this first right so there's this section here first is it bigger does it have another bit maybe it does yeah there's another part of the fringe there right and you'll have sort of texture lines there like that and then his head comes around here and this is like all bumpy because the hair is like all tied up right it goes down behind his ear. I think it is hair. Just looking at it now. And then, so we got all these texture lines then. Like this, the crisscross and go like wrap around. These ones go that way. And then we change direction and go into here. So this one comes around to there. Demon Slayer, sometimes the outside lines can be thicker if you want to do that. I won't do too much of it because it takes up so much time, but you know, the outside edge of our character's contours have this sort of thicker line to it. And then his ponytail comes out here. Down around like so, and then sort of flicks up back here. And we got like some hair spikes here. And bring it down again that way. And like another piece of hair flops down this way. Goes underneath, back up. Like that. Just goes up 
to here. And some texture lines inside. Right. Boop. And then some more coming around here. Right, so then we got some more spikes coming up here. And some more ponytails for the lines, texture and stuff. Boop. And then this one comes around to there. Like so, right, so then jewels on his headband, right? So again, these are bigger than these ones, but we want to do the same sort of thing. So we're adding these sort of angles. Like so, and another one here. Like that, and then one here. And there's a couple of small ones on the edge there, it looks like. So this sort of thing here. And what I mean by the edge is like here, right? One there, and a small one here. And there's one that like sticks off the front, just here like that. And there's all these angles on the inside. Kind of look like shields or something. So these sort of diamonds, right? And then we do lines coming this way, coming off it like so. There. And we just keep going up around each one, adding these angles. You don't have to do it exactly like mine. You know, you can kind of make it up if you want. And we just give an edge to sort of these ones. Like so. There, something there, there. Right, so that's his headband. So we're nearly there. All right, so he's got this big sword that comes across here. We'll, we'll do the sword before we do sort of his body and his back, right? So, say, say the front, say here. So the sword will kind of curve all the way down. like that, right? And then he's got these bandages wrapped around it, so they kind of flow around. So, starting here. Right, that's one, and then the top. Right. So we're roughly just getting it across his body this way. You know, you can do it lower, higher, don't worry if, if yours isn't exactly in the same position as mine, because you can just fill in the gaps with more or less of his shoulders. Right? You just want to get it in this sort of position, going diagonal. So like, the, like when artists are drawing these sort of characters, they don't worry if like the sword is really close to his chin or less. They can just fill in the space, you know, as they imagine where the body is. Right? So it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. And then, so that comes down that way. And then the sword continues there's a bit of a gap in the bandage and then more bandage wraps this way like this
going down that way. And then I think there's like this dark black curve. When I start at the top of it, it's like gold and this black here. And then more bandage. Down that way. And then he has, what is that? Okay, so there's like a spike here. There's a hole in his sword. There's like a spike here. Right, and then we leave a bit of a gap and then there's another spike here. Right, and then this will curve around underneath the bandage. Interesting sword. Right. And then it has a dark edge. Just there. And then there's some more bandage here. So comes around this way. Like so. And then comes across the top here. Kind of bumps across all the way to the edge. So we bump it, we'll just bump and then fill in the details, right? So like there, and then a spike on the end of his sword. Curves back that way. Okay, so I hope this is making sense now. You can kind of see the sword in underneath this bandage. So he's a bit of fabric that's blowing off, like here. Comes back up around that way. A little bit sticking off there. Then another fabric line there. Here in this way and then here Boop. And fold line there fabric fold line here here and so then the bottom of his sword sticks out here so then we should see a little bit here I, I can't make it out but I think we're gonna go, I'm gonna guess, right? So I think, mm, I'm gonna put it here. So I think it curves a little bit from this. So there like that, right? So that's black and that's fabric. All right, so this is kind of tricky now, so I better take my time. Um, So we've got the hilt of his sword here. So this golden end, right? So it goes out and up there. And then we have another edge to it here. And it sort of bumps around and joins that underneath this fabric, right? So it like, so if you imagine it curves up around to here this line where it eventually becomes one line and then and then we have the actual handle of his sword back here so we'll start here bumps out here bumps up real long here comes into there and then it comes up and around and goes underneath this fabric now if your fabrics in a different position you could just bring this across and down kind of similar to this one like a mirror image you know if your fabric is higher or lower you know what I mean so like you could see if you could see more but anyway if not let's keep going it's got an edge like that and then a sort of a another line showing the edge of it here as well and the corners So comes in, and then like an edge here as well. And then there's some patterns inside here, like so. Another one there, and then it 
kind of comes out and down this way. This one comes in, and he's got another pattern here. Comes off that way. Oh no, curves up. Sorry. Oops. <laughs> Is that right, yeah? Comes down, curves up in there. So his hand holding it here. So the bottom of his wrist or his glove, he's got like a blue glove on right here. And then we have golden bracelets on the wrist, two of them. So if I go too fast now, just hit your pause button. And it seems to have this waving sort of pattern on it like so and then the rest of his wrist goes off this way so his hand comes up here so we go up like so and we meet a knuckle so it comes around up to there and then we have another knuckle so hands are tricky now so take your time next finger out and down like so, knuckle line here, knuckle line there. The next finger has a ring on it, so it comes down here and we have some curved lines across like that, like a silver ring. And then we continue out here for the knuckle line. And this line, because this is blue in here. And then the final one, so you can just see it roughly here. Knuckle coming that way. Like that. Okay, so I hope that makes sense for you now. And then handle of his sword goes this way. And we have some of those diamonds. Maybe another one. There. And we got... <laughs> Some edges to it like there's these strings sort of wrapped around you know and Japanese swords okay so then what we can see of his shoulder and neck etc and then we're pretty much done so like we can see a little bit of his neck and his collar so his collar comes around towards his chin right and goes underneath his chin actually just there and the back of this collar will go underneath the jewel. And then the other side of it, say there. And then it'll go underneath. Like so. And then we got like some extra sort of lines there like that. And then something else coming under that way. And then we can see like the back of his neck here and with some neck muscle lines just like so and he does have a shadow underneath his chin as well and you just draw that in and color it dark black so then just his back bumps out down to there bring it around like so and we can see maybe some of his sleeve just inside here. Like so his shoulder would be here. And then we got like some fold lines here. And then his shoulder on the other side. And there's all those jewels that actually come down this way. But we'll draw we'll draw in the shoulder line first. So he's got like a sleeveless demon slayer uniform on, right? So it's kind of sleeveless like that. And I think there's like another fabric line or something there. And then a full line up that way. And then his actual shoulder comes down there. And then he's got these golden things on his bicep. And you can just see his bicep in here. He's got some veins going that way. And then his arm goes off that way. You can see some veins on his shoulder as well. So he's a very muscly sort of guy, right? So, like so. And then we just have another line of jewels and some fabric sort of flowing out behind, right? So 
these jewels again here so you just do these angle lines and the next one starts on top of the previous one right so say that one you leave a gap and then you start the next one and they get kind of smaller then you have a small one a big one you do this kind of random it doesn't have to be exactly like mine These will go all the way. Down behind his sword. Like so, and if you go over any of his shoulder lines, you can just erase them. And then we add our angle lines on the inside, right? So this kind of stuff, just to make them look a little bit 3D. And you're always going for straight sort of lines going in different angles and that's what you're after, okay? So, it's all about the angles. Right, so then we just have like some, say like some lines like this kind of stuff coming out from behind his head. Just this sort of, it's horn. I don't know if it's like torn fabric coming off the sword or maybe it is, I'm not sure really just these kind of spiking kind of fabric lines right so and then maybe some back here as well so just like curving around wrapping around his body there and one in here Like that. Um, right, but that's pretty much it. That's how to draw Tengen Uzui, the sound Hashira from Demon Slayer. Hope it was helpful. No, it's complicated, but hope it was enjoyable anyway even if you just watched <laughs> so hope it's helpful thanks for watching see you in the next one bye